All right, now we will test the resistance meter. We're in the ohm mode on the Fluke 92B. And we're going to pick up a resistor here. And let's see, what is it? It's red, red, black. So that should be 2, 2 times 10 to the 0 or 22 ohms. Let's see what it clocks down to. Approximately 22.1 comes up. So that resistance is working. Let's try something a little bigger. Here's something with a green multiplier, 10 to the 5th. It looks like a gold, a yellow. Oh, I'm sorry. It's got a brown multiplier. So it's 4 yellow, green. 475 I think if I remember correctly I don't remember oh my bad 45 so it's showing us yeah it's correct okay 45 green is 5 and 10 to the 2 so 4 point 448 ohms and let's try another one see if we can get another one here that's kind of got some else hard to see these colors in this light this looks like a brown black and a brown it should be around a kilo ohm yeah, 10. Nope, my bad. It was off by one multiplier. 100 ohms, 99.3. Man, it's hard to see these colors, and I don't remember my resistor table that well. It's been 20 years since I thought about it. So here's a yellow, yellow, purple, red. So that's going to be, um, four, I think, 4, 7 times 10 to the 2. So what do we get? We should get a 4, 7 something other. Yeah, 4.7 kilo ohms. So the ohm meter part of this unit is working. All right, let's going to move over to the diode check. All right, this is going to be the forward, the diode check. We're going to use LEDs to get ourselves, here's a nice LED, to get ourselves a decent looking color and a changing voltage drop relative to the color. So we hook this one up. Boy, it's not glowing, but it's showing 1.49 volts. Let's see if we can see if we can turn the light off right quick. See so if we can get anything. Yeah, it's glowing, but it's really faint. Okay, so 1.49. That's about right. One and a half volts volt forward voltage drop on red. Let's go up one color to orange. Let's see if we get any glow out of it. And yeah, we do have a glow. We have to turn the light off to see it. 1.78 volts forward drop. Uh, yeah, you can't hardly see it. It's really faint. Camera won't pick it up. Okay. And let's finally go to the green one. Not quite enough drive current coming out of the fluke. It's just meant to test. Man, talk about pick up a dirty alligator clip. 2.7. That seems a little high, but maybe I'm wrong. I ah, quit dropping off. Don't short out. Um, is there any glow in there? I don't see anything. 2.7 volts on a green LED. Yeah, it's glowing, but boy, is it hard to see. It's there. If we disconnect it, it should go dark. Yeah, you can see it come on and off. Just barely. Boy, so looks like the diode check on the scope 92B is working. We'll move on to the next test. All right, this is a basic check of the 90, Fluke 92B scope meter. We're going to check and see if it's actually picking up. It's working in the megahertz range. I don't have any calibration, so this is the best way to check against a quartz crystal. I'm using a basic Culpitz oscillator, and that's buried down here in this circuit from here up, actually. And there's the crystal. It's set at 5 megahertz right now. We're going to energize that thing and see what the scope does. It should pull it right back up. And it'll auto-range here in a second. We're still auto-ranging. It just auto-ranged. Let's see if we can touch it here and show. that It's 50 nanoseconds per division, 2 volts. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 50 nanoseconds is 200 nanoseconds, which the reciprocal of that is 5 megahertz. And we can also confirm with the AOR. We'll boot the AOR here so we get the reflection off the screen. 
it's operating it so we can get it to focus here at 5 megahertz and if we detune you can hear the beat frequency so this thing is leaking all over the place it's a little bit high it's about 2 kilohertz high but that's okay alright let's try another crystal turn that thing off get rid of all that noise and we'll come back after setup for the color burst crystal at 357 okay so this is a fluke 92b test at uh, 3 point let's see what it said I wrote it up here on this 3.5795 megahertz oscillation and we'll energize this. You should see the red LED come on here in a second. Try to control the shadows here. We got shadows off the yin yang on the wrong side of the camera. The LED looks like it's lit up. And we turn on the AOR. Yeah, we got signal on the scope. We'll check that calibration here in a second. 3.579 megahertz is awful whistle. And we get a beat frequency at about 358.02. 358.02 approximate beat frequency. Ooh, that's a noisy thing. All right, so it's oscillating at this color burst frequency of 3.5795 megahertz. Let's check the peak count here. So there's, we're at 50 nanoseconds per division. There's, this, there's a peak. One, two, three, four, five and a half divisions, really about 5.6 divisions. And I did the math a little earlier, 5.6 times 50 is 280 nanoseconds, which is about right for the t time, t, t sub zero, the reciprocal of the frequency for this one. So the scope is doing its magic here. And sometimes the meter mode, it did for 5 megahertz. I don't know why it will not sync up. It would sync up for 5 megahertz, but it won't for 3.57. We'll try another one at another, another lower frequency. Okay, so now we're going to test the scope against, and let's see if we can bring it up here and show it in the light if it won't reflect too much, a 1.8432 megahertz uh, quartz crystal. Now, why is it 1.8432 megahertz? Well, I'd kind of forgotten this. I just looked it up. It was used as a clock reference for 115, 200 modems and down dial-up modems. So that was kind of an interesting twist it was basically a nice integer multiple allowed you to have all those different baud rates in the old days when you had dial up and i don't know where i got this crystal probably out of a junk box okay we got a light on we've energized the oscillator and up here on the scope meter mode it's showing 1.842 which might be realistic let's see what it says cross check with the aor let's see let it boot up here and we go to oh, the second harmonics all over the place one point eight four two hit enter oh yeah it's there and we're getting a zero beat at ugh, eight four eight one point eight four three eight so that's probably there's a lot of stray capacitance in this circuit I didn't hear the you can hear the digital hash from the digital hash from the scope meter and we go over here to scope mode and slow it down. Let's see what kind of waveform we got. I've got a really ugly one. There's a lot of stray capacitance. This is not a well-tuned circuit. It's not well designed for what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to get some basics out of it. Let's see if we can pick up on a peak here. Okay, so that little ripple is right there. We're at 100 nanoseconds per division. One, two, three, four, five point four. So that's 540 Let's see, 5 540 nanoseconds, which is approximately right for one point, the reciprocal of 1.84 megahertz. So it looks like the scope, the scope 92B, is functioning, at least with these little ad hoc tests, relative to quartz crystals, as basically stable. And after 20 years, I guess I bought this in 1999, so I'm not so surprised it seems to be still in calibration. I guess for completeness sake, I ought to show one other frequency, a little higher. This is, uh, I don't even know where I found this in the junk box. It says Crystal Tech, T-E-K, and it's probably hard to see on the camera, but it says 8 megahertz. So let's see if this baby will light up in here at 8 megahertz. 
Let's turn the radio on first and get it over there. And hit eight, enter. Nothing so far, but a bit of digital hash. Oh, baby. Yeah, the light came on. We got a light. Yeah, it's definitely there. And we got, ugh, that's terrible. And we definitely have on the scope, we definitely have a waveform. Let's see if we can check it here. We're on 200 nanoseconds per division. Let's see if we can line this bad boy up. A's right there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six point four times 20. So somebody who's working for IBM should probably multiply that out. 6.4 times 20. So that's a 20 on the bottom. 6.4, drop a 0, 8, 12. And it, yeah, it's working out pretty good. 12, uh, 128, 128 nanoseconds per, per, per waveform. And the reciprocal of 1.125 nanoseconds is 8 megahertz. Okay, so it's definitely working with um, 8 megahertz in portion of the scope meter mode. It probably won't sync up. Yeah, it's OL because it's above the 5 megahertz threshold. It would sync on 5 megahertz, though. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so definitely the scope can go to 8 megahertz. Okay, we'll kill...